Hare Krishna. Dear devotees, so Hare. we will start the panel discussion. Sangini Mataj, Sangani Madhavi uh, Devi Dasi and Amritesh Madhav uh, Das, they are from Madurai. They will be uh, um, uh, doing the moderation for this uh, panel. Hare Krishna. Handing over Hare to Krishna. Sangani uh, Madhavi Devi Dasi and Amritesh Madhav Das. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Um, actually, I just thank um, Swarup Krishna Prabhu to offer me this uh, service. Uh, I'm in a midst of uh, exalted devotees with a uh, lot of knowledge with uh, doing programs with children and education. Uh, myself, um, Sangini Madhavi Devidasi and Amritesh Prabhu, and uh, we have just started this venture and we are just now trying to we have, we have featured a curriculum. And this would be very helpful for us. Also for the um, ISKCON uh, Ministry of Education. So actually, I just for, uh, first I ask, want to ask this question: uh, Which should be the guiding principle for the education that has to be given to the children now? Because even that is the question for this uh, ANEP. ANEP also offers for the um, value-based education that should be guided in the guided to the schools. So, what should be our vision? What should be the our guiding principle if you are going for such programs? Pataji are uh, asking uh, one of us. Uh, you can this. Uh, yes, ma yes, Prabhu. This is a common question, Prabhu. I have this question. So, the panel as such, you can uh, answer. Prabhu. Let's go with senior most first. What does he can answer? Oh, no, we'll go with Gauranga Darshan Prabhu first. I'm he's the one who's he, he's the one who has been uh, writing books actually. So, though I'm uh, I'm engaged in uh, children preaching and I I did I do summer camp and I run a school, but um, I'm uh, really grateful for the books that uh, Gauranga Darshan Prabhu has been uh, uh, you know releasing one by one and amazing. Uh, books that you know i mean uh, we do prescribe those books in our school at uh, divine touch so yes as the scorn schools our foundation principle is to yes uh, make them uh, have a purposeful life here and and then yes um, with an ultimate aim of going back home back to godhead so <clears throat> But most importantly, now seeing the present scenario, it is so much important that we have that kind of uh, guidelines and curriculum which make them a good human being first. That's very important. Like you know the the minimum culture and because um somehow I feel that um in a rush to make them pure devotees, sometimes we we don't focus on the minimum principles of being a good human being. So I have seen that, you know, anything is okay because we are Krishna's devotees on anything to please Krishna. So um, those things need to be fine-tuned and our curriculum or vision should be, should be such that even in a secular world, our, our children or our devotees or our young men will be respected highly. So when we talk about ISKCON schools or ISKCON found, it should be such that our children should be morally strong, spiritually enriched, academically proficient, um, and, uh, you know, strong in every situation, lead the society. And uh, in our curriculum, we should have such a uh, support system whereby um, for the rest of their lives, children will have that um, um, support of you know what they have learned in a in a school, a school and they will be able to lead a balanced life that's also very important i'm using specifically emphasizing on the word balance because sometimes um in a race to make them krishna devotee we sometimes uh, undervalue the um importance of how to have a balanced life here in this world also uh, because not everybody can become a monk they will have to come you know be in a grass ashram and deal with so many situations and not everybody can be a full-time devotee at his so they will have to work with the outside world so you know I mean, like teach them how to have balanced perspective and how to live a balanced life. So our curriculum has to, you know, be in such that a, a well-rounded personality of, you know, like a wholesome growth, a holistic uh, growth should happen of an individual. 
Oh yes, Madhuji. As you mentioned, sometimes we we um, give over importance to making them best devotees, and so we sometimes uh, just ignore the values that they have to hold on. So that should be given to the children. The, the, so you feel that should be the foundation, right? That should be the vision. That should guide the education. That should guide the framework as such. So it should, as you said, it should be a rounded thing, giving the wholesome education. So actually, but education is itself, it has to give the values also. But right now we find such difficulties. Um, so Gaurang Darshan Prabhu, do you have some uh, insights on those things, Prabhu? Yes. Uh, actually, Mita Swani Mataji has wonderfully covered uh, everything that we need to provide the children in a, in a very brief uh, uh, just in two, three minutes, Sri Mataji very beautifully covered everything. Uh, basically, I put it this way. Uh, we need to have two purposes in life. One is self-preservation. Second is self-realization. This is the immediate purpose and this is the ultimate purpose. So, when we say self, there are two kinds of self we are talking about. <laughs> One is the soul, the spirit soul. Second is the spirit soul is embodied now. Uh, it's trapped in a material body. So bodily maintenance is also a purpose in human life. So we need to uh, give rest to the body. If you see in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna spoke a lot of uh, knowledge on spiritual subject matters, bhakti and all that. But he also spoke, emphasized a lot on you know, maintaining the body, coming to mode of goodness, yukta hara vihara si yukta chishta se karmasu, uh, my, like having a proper uh, balance in our physical uh, lifestyle and also having a peaceful mind, buddhare atman atmanam atmanam avasadayet. <laughs> so balancing and uh, you know, harmonizing the subtle body with the functions of the gross body and all uh, coming together to... Uh, attain the ultimate purpose of self-realization. So we need to teach them self-preservation also and self-realization also. So in the name of making them Krishna's devotees, we can't just disconnect them from the mainstream education and uh, the innocent pleasures that kids deserve in their lives. They need to play. It's not just uh, the Ananda Maya Kosha where you take Ananda in Bhajan of Krishna. So we need to nourish their Annamai Kosha also, Gnanamai Kosha also and other Koshas are there. All five Koshas must be incorporated within a kid's education. So yes, some people can focus more on the spiritual education part, but uh, there should be some individuals and teachers who take care of their physical maintenance and the internal emotional stability and intellectual growth also. Thus, self-realization and self-preservation must be going well together. So, yes, uh, these are a few thoughts. I, I, often tell, I often tell the parents, don't punish your children just because they are not incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. Sometimes parents have undue expectations. Oh, my child is not reading Propas books. Yes, reading Propas books is great, but he's hardly seven, eight year old. And sometimes the extent of uh, the philosophy and uh, the intensity of the philosophy is like too high for a small child to digest. Yes, you can. That, that oh, that's a very good term, self-preservation and self-realization. Yes, we should balance with those, both the things. Um, um, I just asked this question to His Grace Radha Khan Prabhu. Prabhu, as you run the school, how do you do this, Prabhu? Uh, both, as Prabhu said now, self-preservation and self-realization. So, running a school would be a challenge, right? It would be balancing both the school, both the things. Yes, yes, Mataji. So, as uh, Nitai Seni, Mataji and Gauran Darshan have rightly said, that we need to balance. So, right now in Vrindavan, we have a regular ICC curriculum. But along with that, we have a lot of Krishna consciousness. So, and what we do, see, till class, for the junior classes, till class 8, more emphasis is on language, right? Because that's what students need to learn. And ICC has a flexibility, they don't have very uh, strict curriculum till class 8. Ninth onwards, they follow strictly ICC curriculum. So till class 8, what we have done is, we have incorporated a lot of Krishna consciousness in their curriculum, like English. So we teach English through um, Arudha Mataji's Bhagavatam book. If you are aware that Arudha Mataji, she has produced some Bhagavatam series. 
uh, with lots of activities and english uh, based activities and other things so right from class 4 to 8 we are following that book for english similarly from class 1 to 4 also we because english that read story right that's how they learn english so we use all the krishna conscious story books and literature so till 1 to 8 are english entire english curriculum is kind of krishna conscious so this is how we have integrated both together so students don't miss out on anything the same time they are taught english through krishna consciousness uh, we also using goran darshan to who's book some sometimes and also we are using shubha vilas to who's books he has produced a nice value education series uh, are you aware of that based on ramayan and hanuman yeah. chalisa so all that we are following uh, and the students are not missing out on uh, on their regular part because very good english the books are well researched and uh, nice vocabulary for the children so all that we are doing and as far as science and maths is concerned well you can't i mean make it uh, regular books are good enough ncert or icc books is just that the teacher who teaches he has to little bit present in the krishna consciousness like we we'll are teaching science so the students can be told a little bit about this is supreme creator and just connect a little bit to krishna so actually speaking uh, we don't have to make any drastic change at such so what really matters is the teacher should be devotee that's very important so in our school around uh, 80 90% teachers are devotees so once they are devotees they teach science or math they can always connect to krishna that's one thing that we do and of course english directly we teach through krishna conscious books uh, and then we have some specific uh, shastra classes we call it where we directly teach bhagavatam and some story books and then from 9 to 12 uh, they have a full icc curriculum um, where we can't uh, help much it's a, they have a lot of load physics chemistry biology three but still we give them some krishna consciousness so that's how we try to balance uh, both the aspects and it's uh, it's going on uh, nicely in fact i would encourage i mean it's such, uh, it's it's quite successful the students are getting good marks in 12th class they're going to good colleges they they're going to good career at the same time uh, with the many years of krishna conscious education uh, they always maintain that when they go out so i think over my last 14 years i have been with the gurukul uh, now so now we have a big campus also so i think this is a successful model and uh, we can actually replicate and have more schools uh, like this in iskon or devotees who are who follow the philosophy of iskon they can actually go for such schools that's my advice yeah. thank you prabhu so i have one more question uh, now as you said uh, shastra classes for active said uh, for 9th and above right prabhu grades 9 9 shastra class is there for everyone 1 to 12 everyone and till 1 to 8 even english is taught through krishna conscious books but 9th okay. onwards you have to follow icc curriculum they have shakespeare and their own poems and stories so we don't change the other subjects curriculum but still we add shastra subject thrice a week for 9 to 12 until 1 to 8 that entire entire english is shastra based like english is bhagavatam based based on krishna conscious stories So, based on research, actually, the organization Prabhu uh, is running is, is giving some series, but that is that is that, that runs separately uh, apart from the school, and uh, we have schools also where Krishna consciousness is also presented parallelly along with the academic curriculum. Um, so, which one would the uh, is that based on children's necessity or need? Which one would they take easier? Is there any uh, specific guidance? It should be like this, or it should be like this. Uh, Nitai Tevni Mata Ji, you are doing both the things, right, Mata Ji? You are doing also children program and you are also running a school. So, can you throw some insights about these things, Mata Ji? No, I could not follow your question. What you said? So, uh, actually, sometimes it happens that we give children program separately. Now, that is apart from the school. That goes apart from the school, and we have programs in the school also. So, where do you think the children are finding that uh, uh, the app place, or it depends on the children how it goes, Mataji? No, I, okay. Now, this is there is one thing when you talk about schools. There are some schools which are ISKCON affiliated school. Then there are some schools which are ISKCON inspired school. So now, when you talk about my school that I run in Vaisak, Divine Touch is not ISKCON affiliated. I would say it's ISKCON inspired because um, it's not run totally by devotee teachers as such. And the students that I get are normal students, like local people, local businessmen. They send their children. So here, the way I introduce Krishna consciousness is very different than what. 
we may be doing in iskon gurukuls and all because i need to do it in a very subtle way i can't go outrightly and talk about it so everything that i have to do is uh, very slowly so there are of course advantages and disadvantages of this kind of um, setup but then a slow and steady does does make an um, impact so like uh, what prabhu was just saying uh, talking rather kan prabhu even we also uh, prescribe this books of uh, shubhavilas prabhu especially his books of good habits and he has a workbook connected to krishna book so even our children read that and apart from that you know radhisham prabhu also has some uh, books you know some moral value books some story books even that even gauranga darshan prabhu's books uh, especially his geeta wisdom books which has shloka and then there are stories connected to shloka so apart from that even arudha mata ji's book and then there's another couple from bangalore they have some value books so all this we are introducing apart from that even golden age media nandakopal prabhu in delhi he has come with values of life their volume 1 to 8 so that we have made like a compulsory value textbook for our um, children from class 1 to 8 so yeah uh, we do lot many things and all but when you talk about um, other exclusive children program we do which is not connected to school like i do summer camp or sunday school uh, definitely um, there we give full time to the children and uh, we openly preach so there it's like parents have voluntarily sent with a motive that jao learn something krishna conscious but when it comes to school there is you know they want them to be academically good and then there is a different uh, uh, goal there right so uh, and at the same time i i i cannot say that we, which one is better because this is like a crash course uh, which is given for 15 days summer camp or something and school is something that happens whole year round so yeah this is something where we stimulate their krishna consciousness the summer camp part but for it to stay uh, you know longer and stay continuously as a full academic school program is always better because where they will have a choice of practicing in the like minded crowd you know when all the children are you know doing it together when it comes to children exclusive summer summer programs and all they learn something from us but when they go back to their school they are again exposed to a different set of crowd who don't know anything about krishna consciousness so they need to survive but when it comes to school everybody is together doing that activity so that becomes more easy for them to uh, follow and practice um, krishna consciousness so I, i wouldn't be able to say which one is better but yeah this is more concentrated and because especially the summer camps that i do are residential so the children stay with us in the temple so it's a completely different experience i mean they are with us 24 hours so morning 4:30 from mangalarti till you know uh, in the i mean like they take rest they are with me and i personally engage them in different activities so it's a completely different experience so yeah i mean yeah both have their own purpose yes yes i would like others also to contribute and not speak continuously yeah uh both should go in parallelly because when they mm-hmm. go to schools they get their academic education which is required to earn their livelihood make a career in the mainstream society and spiritual education has to be parallelly impacted now in the case of vrindavan uh, uh, school run by his grace radhakant prabhu their devotees are learning the mainstream subjects also along with spirituality so i went to that school beautiful school beautiful goshala <laughs> wonderful hospitality very beautiful children i was speaking damodar leela there <laughs> yeah it was nice so such schools are very less in in the world where the management is primarily devotees and they are making it uh, very uh, consciously making it a point that we need to impart spiritual education apart from their academic uh, mainstream education now in my childhood i studied in a school in sirkakulam called balabhanu vidyalayam there we have mainstream education but entire school 6 700 students of the um, school would assemble for a morning program for about 45 minutes we used to recite bhagavad gita shlokas every day sometimes seasonally when there is dhanurmas we used to recite uh, vishnu sahasranam dasara time we used to recite lalita sahasranam shivaratri time we used to recite uh, rudram namakam chamakam and mantra pushpam here and there uh-huh. then dasha shantalu then sri suktam purusha suktam so seasonally and bhagavad gita is like prominent one so 3 years from my, in my 8th standard 9th standard 10th standard 
So we had a morning program about 45 minutes with all the children we were reciting shlokas. So there are some schools, even in the outside uh, the society also, they are emphasizing on spiritual education apart from their mainstream education. So this is spiritual education where you directly teach them Shastra, Ramayana, Mahabharata and all. And there is another thing, value education. So value education, spiritual education can be like together basically, additional to their mainstream education. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna spoke a lot about uh, you know, uh, soul, bhakti, karma yoga, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, etc. But Krishna also spoke about sadgunas, so many virtues. Amanitam, adam, bhittam, ahimsa, kshanti, rajavam. So we need to also train children in values like non-enviousness, humility, pride, uh, uh, pridelessness, then satisfaction, tolerance, equanimity, gratitude, teaching them how to thank. So we need to teach them values also. So this value education and spiritual education should be a part of the mainstream education in all the schools, ideally. <laughs> But now this spiritual education and well education may not be a part of uh, uh, many schools curriculum. So, but devotees have to send their children to those schools and to learn the mainstream education. But we need to have parallel programs either in Sunday schools or at Sunday schools or some kind of satsang programs where devotee kids come together and they learn Shastra particularly. So both are required. It's not that this or that, both are needed. There are a few thoughts. In our summer camps also, we have this immersive programs, four-day summer retreat. And in December, there is winter retreat we run. So five to eight, one group. Then eight to 12 age group, like one retreat we have. Teens, we have one more retreat uh, on-site. Then online courses we do once in a while. So somehow or the other, they should just get exposure to both spiritual education and value education apart from their mainstream academic education. Okay. So, so you also mentioned about the retreat and Mataji also spoke about the summer camp which uh, runs residential. So what is the general feedback that is given by the parents, though if they are even uh, devotees or not devotees, what is the general feedback? How do the parents feel about the programs? And how do the children they take part? If they are coming by 4.30, residential, if, Math, if Mataji said it's a residential program and the children join by 4.30 with the Manglarthi and they are having a tight schedule, how do the children take and when they get back to their parents, they would be getting, they would be giving their feedback and how the parents feel. So it, it's a difficult thing, right? Getting up for Mangala and the two, they are not trained for those things. It will be difficult for them. So how do the parents uh, react for those things? The, the general feedback of the parents is, can you keep them holy around? <laughs> can you just keep them with you? <laughs> Because uh, the anesthesia of summer camp remains for a month, you know. And when they go back home also, they are like, because we teach them values like, you know, Pada Namaskaram, respect the elders, you know, watch the sunrise, get a chant, all that thing. So it stays for a month. And then again, it's definitely not the fault of the children, but the kind of atmosphere they have at home because the parents are not doing it. So how long will they be able to maintain what they learned at the camp, right? So after one month, the parents are the one who complained that, you know, again, he has become what he was, but who made him that is the parents because they watch TVs up to late in the night and they don't get up with the children. So they take them to the parties and they give them non-offered food. So whatever we do here, they uh, try their best to undo it because the only thing they want is they just want the, what do you say, egg from the hen. They don't want to feed it. I mean, they just want the benefit out of it, like, because when they take up to Krishna conscious programs, there is so much change in the children's general behavior also. They become milder, they talk very respectfully, their attitude towards everything change, they value things. So all that stays for some time. But you know, but um, on a positive note, on a positive note, uh, many of the parents come back and say that they're so happy uh, with the program. <clears throat> Not only the uh, summer program, even the school. I share one small incident. I was in Bangalore sometime back and the Bangalore airport and I met one old uh, couple and they, as soon as they saw me, they came running and, you know, they was they were paying obeisances and they said, we just want to say thank you. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't recognize you. Then he said, years ago, my grandson studied in your school, Divine Touch. So he said, I wanted to share an incident, uh, uh, Principal Madam, what happened is I was sick sometime back and 
my grandson who was just maybe like 8 year old came and said don't worry grandpa i'll chant narsing aarti i'll chant narsing dev mantra and you'll be fine so he started chanting narsimha aarti so the kind of faith they that they are instilled with that lord protects us so he was so grateful even like uh, some of our parents they are they are very amazed when their little children they are in the party and you know for children something like cake is very attractive but when they say no this may be having egg and the parents have to no no it doesn't have egg no it's not offered to krishna i don't want to eat it so when parents hear like this they come back to us and say oh it's really divine touch you are giving a divine touch to them and we can see that so yeah i mean uh, that kind of feedback makes us feel so happy that yes i mean we are able to you know achieve something But then all of a sudden, then I I don't know how long it lasts because after some time they move to college and for higher education. But my experience of last thirty years is um they may for some time go away here and there, but then they always uh, come back because this is like some seed that we have put, you know. So that can't go anywhere, and you know, and it it will it will uh, come up, you know. So it's just that even if they go here and there, they never forget because. the kind of impression that is on them in this early childhood uh, age it is like you know like a cement uh, on them and uh, yeah even if they have been distracted for some time they do come back oh uh, as you are you also said ah yes yeah so madhuri very rightly said that the seed is implanted and many times you see that in the parents become devotees because of the students right madhuri must have that experience that student gets connected and the child gets connected the parents are actually connected there are so many examples and see uh, everything has importance so the different levels so sunday school is also very important summer camps regular schools so many devotees uh, they have become devotees just by sending children to summer camp when i was in uh, iit kanpur that time i started the uh, summer camp in kanpur is con temple is going on even till now so many devotees became congregation members by the summer camp So I think summer camp, Sunday schools is also very important. So different levels. So Sunday school is one level, summer camp, then ISKCON schools. Within ISKCON school also, as Madhuri said, one is directly run by ISKCON, another is inspired by ISKCON philosophy. So I think time has come that we have so many temples in India now, but somehow we are lacking in number of schools. So uh, I think every temple also they are doing Sunday schools. So we should uh, inspire more Sunday schools, summer workshops. summer camps and also schools full time schools like mother just said because summer camp you do but after one or two months the effect dies down but school is more consistent so they are always there coming all the time so so, so i i is I, I, there is I'm no a loss product, like, come up product here, of summer say. camp yes mother ji you are summer camp i oh, was the product of summer camp, summer camp. oh wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. see basic philosophy is salpa mukti dharma se trayata mahatva hai so whatever little a child learns is going to stay with him eternally so so whatever we give is good enough thank you yes sir so actually that gives me the question how the parents are encouraged so even if they attend the summer camp or whatever it is as mata ji said whatever they learn here again the parents are going to unlearn everything they are, they are going to unlearn everything and they are going to get back to their own routine so how the parents are encouraged to uh, support the child spiritual growth and how we, how it can be done or maybe as prabhu said how can they are also joining the uh, congregation and now then and as prabhu said someone are becoming devotees how the encouragement is given it should be should it be should that be the part of the uh, school or sunday program or that should be the part of the community or congregation so uh, how it should run to korangadarshan prabhu wanted to add something the last question yes yes prabhu <coughs> basically learning in the same uh, age group matters a lot all the parents may be very exalted devotees very serious and sincere and seasoned devotees still there is a generation gap between the parents and the kids uh, a kid can a 10 year old kid can connect with another 10 year old kid more than <laughs> a 40 year old father of course parents give a flavor of their affection but children look forward for some kind of sakshars amongst them so at schools they have so many other children of their age group but most of them are not devotees uh, they may be devotees in their own style but uh, uh, so many of them may not be following the vaishnava uh, tradition 
so they may want to go to movies or men they may have a different value system and different idea of what pleasure is so for we need to maximize the exposure of children to other children who are practitioners of krishna consciousness for that this kind of you know weekend schools summer camps winter camps or festival gatherings and some services in the temple regularly visiting temple uh, and when there is congregation program the adults are hearing from some speaker and parallelly some you know adults can engage all the children and teach them krishna stories and all so that that uh, is very crucial because we need to give them devotee friends because children hear less and observe more of course they hear also <laughs> but they observe a lot and they learn a lot when they are observing their own equals in their schools uh eating whatever as mata ji said cakes or puffs or whatever uh, then they are also inspired to do it inspired and sometimes it's like socially they feel totally um like alienated from their children from their friends so we need to bring you know bridge that gap by offering them devotee friendships because they are unable to have like minded friendship within their schools we need to empathize with them and then give them krishna conscious friends in the satsang programs if the parents don't regularly attend satsang programs or temple programs or festivals or this kind of camps uh, retreats then the opportunity of devotee children interacting with other devotee children becomes minimized and they seek friendships outside although they have great opportunity to become krishna conscious by taking birth in krishna conscious families every morsel of food that enter their mouth is krishna prasadam only <laughs> but still because of lack of devotee friends of their age group they may become little disturbed in bhakti so we need to inculcate krishna consciousness more in a inspiring way and not imposing way a loving push is required but aggressive force we have to avoid so we need to identify their strengths and encourage them mainly encouraging devotee friendships amongst uh, their age group so that that definitely works and as far as retreat experience is concerned Mm-hmm. parents definitely loved it and many of our children classes are attended by parents also if it is online next to the child there is a mother or father <laughs> if it is on site also many parents are also sitting behind the children and observing how their children are responding to the questions and asking questions <laughs> and uh, uh, it's like many retreats i felt uh, that parents and children both experienced a similar feeling like the vrajavas is experienced after krishna uh, lifted govardhan for 7 days <laughs> when krishna was keeping the govardhan mountain back in its place after 7 days none of the vrajavas is wanted to go their homes go to their homes <laughs> they wanted to stay there indra why did you stop rain why don't you uh, you know shower some rain for one more week we get to associate with krishna <laughs> so it's like that for many kids retreats that we had uh, but as as mother ji also said the other side is also there Uh, once they go back they are back into their own normal routine and it's undone in one sense but vibrations will last for longer time one day they'll come back especially most distractions happen in teenage up to 12 13 maybe 14 kids are there but beyond 13 14 they with their hormonal changes and and other distractions will just uh, pop up as you say this i'm reminded of this uh, <clears throat> book by russell conwell you know it's a book about uh, a story acres and acres of diamond how there is this man you know who has lots of land acres and acres of land but he's in search of diamond so in search of diamond he sells his land and he goes in search of diamond he never gets the diamond and finally he dies now to the person whom he had sold his farm he discovers that there is actually a mine of diamond in his own farm land which he never knew so sometimes you know when i read this book i was just thinking that it is it is talking about the life of us is con devotees where uh, we are actually looking for preaching preaching to the new people but we have diamonds in our own backyard our own children they are born into krishna conscious family as goranga dashan prabhu rightly said that their every morsel that they eat is krishna prasad if the sound that they hear you know is prabhupad's uh, vani and all but 
uh, because of um, no, if we don't give them the right ESCON, we don't have many ESCON schools as such. I mean, that that's one uh, aspect, you know, one dimension where ESCON has to really work on is we don't have that facilities, proper ESCON school, college, and universities. So our children are forced to go to Karmi school and forcibly exposed to non devotee association, and for them, every day is a struggle of you know because where they've been made to feel that they are alien because they have a shika, because they don't eat, you know, what the other children eat, because they don't watch movies or they don't go out with parents or eat in a restaurant. So, I mean, it's such a, such a sad thing, actually. Hare Krishna, there are some devotee friendship. Yes, bro. There are some parents who uh, take the course of homeschooling. And uh, they they have obviously few guidelines. There are some books available on homeschooling, and and uh, they try to work out a curriculum on their own. Now, in such a scenario, the parents also have a challenge: how to lead their their children. And uh, a question that uh, comes up: Should Iskon have a guideline regarding what sort of curriculum one uh, a parent could follow? and maybe replicate a uh, few of the best practices which have already been discovered in some of the gurukul some schools and some um, retreats and some um, uh, summer camps so if nita is seven months radha kanta prabhu you want oh, to radha. answer this and then i can add to it he has not spoken yet Uh, regarding homeschooling, I think it's not very healthy for a child's development. Like Gaurang Darshan was saying, that they need friends at that age. So if you just isolate them um, from other children, that's not very healthy. Uh, and if yes, that may be the last resort. If there is no devotee association, and but still, uh, that's not a very good uh, option. As I mean, I think that's not a very good option. Even if there is homeschooling, then at least there should be some community of children. On Sundays or every day evening, there should be some group of so homeschooling with a group of parents is okay, but homeschooling in isolation that's not healthy for a child. That's the first point. And secondly, yes, uh, uh, that's a very good point that we can all get together if people are working in the field of school education uh, to come out with some standard uh, curriculum or some guidelines for summer camp. Uh, it'll be nice to uh, share ideas and, in fact, I have an idea. I present the ICC meeting also. That we can have a informal group of all uh, devotees in Iskon connected to schools, and we can have some online or offline meetings. So we are working in that direction. I think that's a good uh, idea that we come out with some common uh, guidelines for curriculum and things like that. That's a good idea. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we can't have a we can't have a very I mean like um, a strict guideline as to this yes. is what needs to be because it will change from area to area. Like what you can yes. teach in US uh, children and their atmosphere is completely different from what you can do with the Indian children. What you can do with the children who are born to devotees. What you can show to the children of you know non devotee parents is completely different. But as you said, we can definitely have an informal group wherein we can pool up resources and we can share on regular basis and. so there is there can be some kind of a resource pool from where you know according to your need and that you can take some you know matter from them so they, yeah that would be nice and yeah as you rightly said about homeschooling now I, i'm not saying homeschooling is absolute because you know we have examples in iskon of successful homeschooling and especially aruda mata ji's her own example yes. of our radhika raman prabhu and gopal hari prabhu but um all said and done it can't be imitated or replicated and if we can't be sure always it will be successful and like another challenge nowadays is both the parents are working even the mother is working the father is working and then of course this homeschooling is something like very serious parents in krishna consciousness oh, would think about something like this but um otherwise on a general basis and not all are uh, i mean qualified also to do homeschooling because the mothers also need to have that uh, right kind of qualification both academically and psychologically uh, spiritually emotionally sometimes the parents themselves are still trying to become devotees so of course uh, i mean when you speak with arudha mata ji she will uh, she gives us a very positive outlook saying that 
we can grow together spiritually with our children it's not that we need to be perfect but all said and done at least um, there has to be a basic qualification to start something like homeschooling you know because uh, you are dealing with the future of your child so i mean are you ready for that like to take it in your hand and and how long will you continue you know no, it's not something that you get enthusiastic about and do it for 6 months and all i mean it has to be you know done in a proper way so are we ready for it that's one <clears throat> uh in my little experience uh i have not uh, uh i don't have any experience actually <laughs> my experience of observing devotees i have seen many devotees in uh, the united states and australia uh there are different types of homeschooling being done one the parents teach everything to the kids second the parents teach a couple of subjects and other subjects the kids learn from through online courses from other teachers and some parents come together and bring their children together and uh, like one parent like uh, children uh, parents of one children will teach you know some subjects other uh, parents of other children will teach some subjects like there is a group of kids who don't go to school but they are a group as prabhu also said they need some company so multiple things some are uh, having very good time the children we are able to see children growing nicely academically emotionally spiritually intellectually uh, but some felt to it's getting too much for us so we are sending from this year we are sending our kid to school so we cannot exactly say this is right this is wrong this is good this is bad it all depends on the nature of the child and the kind of samskaras they acquire in this life and in the past life uh, and also the effectiveness of training and as mataji very nicely said uh it also depends on the capacity of parents to inculcate all the subjects sometimes uh, the parents may not be well equipped with the kind of syllabus that they need to teach and the most important factor is the child's emotional growth when they are with 10 other kids and then learning that has a different uh, em- impact on their emotions if they are isolated and then they are learning that has a different impact on their emotions they become too soft uh, suddenly and how long we can do home schooling up to 10 standard max then they have to go to you know universities and colleges suddenly there's a big transition from home to college and suddenly then they, when they're exposed to the outside culture they become literally really scared sometimes so all these are uh, based on observation only i don't have personal experience of doing all these things mm-hmm. i'm sitting in a brahmachari ashram <laughs> uh, yeah we cannot exactly say this works or that doesn't work but definitely coming together uh, and planning for schools at least for iskon devotees uh, that will definitely uh, be a project worth considering by some uh, iskon devotees uh, we can have our own devotee employees devotee teachers that can be source of their livelihood also that can be service to the devotee community also and many other outside kids also can get connected to this we do mainstream mainstream education also plus we also uh, give some spiritual education so that way uh, this is a very good thought you know i was also thinking about it since a while i want to add something here i'm just reminded of something that happened recently one of the experiences i was i was posted by a family and the mother was telling me that you know of late my daughter has stopped chanting and all so i just heard it and after that we were going for a house program so the daughter was sitting next to me in the car so i took out the counting machine from my mala bag and i handed over to her and i said let's see who completes more rounds before we reach the you know the house program place so i started chanting and she was in full spirit because she wanted to you know i mean uh, defeat me so we both were chanting and the mother was sitting just next to the daughter and she kept on you know patting her and hey chant slowly ah, you're not chanting clearly hey you are skipping this and so she kept on correcting the child and the child was completely frustrated and i didn't want to stop the mother in front of the child and however somehow i signaled her that you know if you can so finally we reached the destination and the girl i mean she defeated me she chanted more rounds then i was wondering on my way back home that not everybody can deal with children it's not that just because you are a mother you can deal with the they don't know i mean there was no need of going on correcting her in sat nag her in such a way that she and then the mother comes and tells me my daughter is not chanting and i understood why your daughter is not i mean in my mind why your daughter is not chanting because she was continuously nagging her so many of my experience like this where i felt that just being a mother 
doesn't qualify you know that you can become a teacher also you need tons of patience and maturity because children are so i mean they're so vulnerable they're so innocent they're so you have to just deal them with in, in the right uh, way you can't you know be very just because you have heard just completed hearing some bhagavatam class where devotee said you have to chant like this and you immediately want to uh, implement it on your kids on your kids hey, do like this do like this you know but maybe that is not the right time for them you know to be given that kind of an instruction so yeah just making my point that not everybody is qualified so we really we need to have like teachers who who have been into children preaching and successful and they can do a better job hari krishna so oh, i think uh, as prabhu said we need to pull up the ideas uh, i think as mother said then that would be a point to uh, start some teacher training programs also right mother so as you said yeah. uh, prabhu also said we need devotee teachers so then that becomes a point where we need some trained te- trained devotees to become teachers not only teaching only shastra or something even the academically oriented teachers they should also have this inclination how to guide the children in a proper way then that becomes a challenge right uh, how to how to train teachers how to, how, how to train devotees to teach children so what should be done for that point mataji Yeah, absolutely right. Uh-huh. Just, just like if I may say something, just like we have TTC one, TTC two, uh, in for adults, and this is a very, very important uh, uh, area of uh, concern which requires to be addressed. Yes, uh, Nita, say any more, Tiji? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, everybody together needs to think and uh, do something and think. Um, something gv can do they are uh, i mean they have lots of teachers they have bhakti vedanta vidya pita i'm sure they must be already doing something about it but uh, something exclusively for children like children teacher training course where how to deal with kids you know how to make them comfortable like when they come here for summer camp it's not that i'm only teaching them shastra shastra i play cricket with them i play kabaddi with them so when when i when you can relate with them on that level then when i come and sit on the class they are all ears they want to hear what i say but if i'm only a teacher who's very grave and you know come on <laughs> it doesn't work like that so special training is required for teachers who deal with children of specific age like every age requires a different kind of teachers so yeah yeah something needs to be done maybe yeah bhakti vedanta vidya peet can do something and maybe introduce a course like that for them. children's teachers that's it said according to different age groups uh, yes right. according to different age groups we need to have many mothers and fathers uh, contribute for this teacher training <laughs> uh, children teacher training course yes we need we can we need to plan yes it's an excellent idea i think we should uh, work on it too. kind of teacher training program so that's very important because as madhe said that teaching is a different skill set because different skill set and devotees they they may have a genuine desire to teach but they may not have those uh, skill sets of being a teacher <laughs> we can actually help them and uh, so in that sense even in our gurukul campus we have a nice guest house now so we can actually maybe think of it that uh, sometimes some teachers can come here stay for some i mean those who are interested to become teachers they can come and uh, see our school and uh, can get some experience and we can actually think of launching some formal course also is possible if we can work with the ministry of education and work on that kind of thing Well, I think and that would be Sindhi a challenge. Mataji is a very good uh, trainer, right? So if we can actually have a workshop like that, so Mataji, Goran Darshan too can come for a day or two and train teachers. It would be good. So somebody needs to coordinate that. That's all. I think there are good uh, trainers, good devotees who are ready to train, and there are devotees who want to learn. It's just that we have to someone has to coordinate and uh, bring together everyone in the same platform. There will be great service. Oh, on another on another point we have uh, parents as ones uh, um and to said right parents need to they also need to be encouraged and they also need to be taught as mata ji said parents should not always be nagging and uh, we can't expect more as mata ji we can't expect uh, pra- prala the incarnation and we can't expect more from the children they are children so some workshop should also be conducted to parents also is there any necessity for that 
as we said workshop for teachers how to be with children and some workshops for for parents and the to devotee parents so sir training yeah definitely the... yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead this what is miss miss No, I was just saying that definitely, yeah. Parenting seminars can be conducted on regular basis, and we can actually have some parenting certificate course also. So, because you see, yeah, like you know, many times uh, parents tell me, "Mataji, my son used to chant so nicely, nursing arti. He used to recite slokas so well, Mataji. Nowadays, he doesn't recite. The problem is that." he is interested to recite but you make it as a matter of prestige for yourself so what happens every time somebody walks in you will call your son chotu motu come on uh, recite nursing arti come on recite nursing arti so now what happens he is bored of nursing arti because every time a guest comes at house you will ask him to repeat come on recite that sloka patram pushpam come on come on come on so now the child has related that patram pushpam to something which is like you know because he's been nagged continuously come on come on so many times i tell the parents instead of asking your children to repetitively repeat it in front of the other guests because you just want to show them look i how well my son is doing why can't you just record a video and send it to everybody your friends and relatives whomever you wanted to show how well your child is doing instead of making him do it again and again so such kind of small small mistakes parents make and then they come back saying my son was doing very well nowadays he doesn't recite nursing art they don't know what happened but because you irritated him to such an extent so as you rightly said yeah some parenting seminars are required where um, uh, parents don't go over board and overdo things sometimes they just yeah they just overdo it and whatever the natural devotion the children had even that is destroyed you know so um if they have been uh, trained how to deal with the uh, um, children it would be very nice because even reading of books even chanting they force the children like anything you know did you complete your rounds did you finish your reading did you so now instead of enjoying reading now they they are psychologically it is psychologically happening now they are relating it something to the nagging of the mother you know my rounds are not completed or oh, this book you have not read you still not read krishna book it's already night so it shouldn't happen like that in krishna consciousness should be so so come so yeah it has to be done in a, so if the parents are trained nicely it will become a fun activity actually to get together and read together and you know, so yeah certain tips can be given to parents to how make how pass book reading um, entertaining for the children very relishable something that they look forward to whole day when it's going to be 8 o'clock and when will we all get together and read krishna book so and then and there are certainly there are tips uh, practical tips to make it more interesting yes and another thing that parents might innocently do is comparing their children with other children so these kids know so many shlokas our kids don't yes. know shlokas. then that comparison also makes them feel a sense of inferiority complex and when the kids are just playing or you know shouting or screaming hey don't do that chant then they see chanting as punishment so as mother ji said it should be susukham kartum abhyayam <laughs> instead of experiencing that sukham in chanting they see that oh when i do some mischief as a punishment they give a bead bag in my hand uh, so that becomes uh, very austere for the child to accept. so as as uh, both of you said some kind of training is also required and those who are experienced in parenting can do it and another important point from my side what i can say is in uh, shrimad bhagavatam there are wonderful examples of good parenting and bad parenting Sunit is a wonderful example of good parenting, and Uttana Path. At one point, at one phase in the, his life, he acted as a bad parent. He showed some kind of partiality between two, between two, his two sons, and Sunit, as soon as she detected some uh, dissatisfaction or some kind of envy or hatred in the heart of her small child, immediately she told, "Don't desire harm for your stepmother." Uh, please understand that we reap the results of our own past misdeeds. So she immediately trained. She is example of good parent. She immediately said, "Take shelter of Krishna." So a good example of parenting and bad example of parenting you can see throughout Shrimad Bhagavatam. Shukra Charya, for example, there was a conflict between Devayani and Sharmista in the ninth canto of Bhagavatam. So they had some conflict, and Sharmista threw Devayani into the well, and later Devayani came and complained to Shukra Charya. and shukracharya instead of pacifying and then making things normal <laughs> he said vrishaparva 
you should satisfy whatever my daughter demands whatever my daughter demands you should just fulfill her demands and what did devyani say sharmista should become my maid servant for the rest of her life when i get married to yayati see father is fanning the spark of their enmity small childish quarrel somehow their dresses got exchanged in haste that's all instead of kind of uh, like pacifying them uh, making them less agitated he kind of uh, supported the egoistic behavior of devyani and made these two friends into lifelong enemies so sukra we should not uh, parents should not encourage the children when the children are harboring some negative feelings or hatred towards others so they need to be trained in forgiving for that parents need to set a good example <laughs> like many things so definitely some kind of uh, training systems for parents and uh, teachers of kids all these are required so to conclude with uh, uh, what would be the general message that should be given to the uh, iscon supporters and devotees and congregation This is a question for uh, um, everybody. So, Nitai Sayani Mataji, Gaurav Dasan Prabhu, Radha Kant Prabhu, can throw some insights on this. What would what would be the concluding message that is given for the that should be guide the guiding the community and the congregation and the temples? Radha Kant Prabhu, you haven't spoken. Please go. <clears throat> so, one message is that uh, it's very very important that uh, we. Give Krishna consciousness to our own devoted children, and also it's a good uh, preaching tool to connect to even outsiders. So that is something that uh, Iskon uh, devotees, as a, I mean, everybody should uh, give priority. Just like youth preaching, IVF is so important now, college preaching and congregation preaching. But somehow, uh, preaching to children is not that priority in Iskon. Of course, we had a bad history in the 80s, 90s, but now we should get over it. And I think more priority should be given to children preaching. Uh, both for devotee children and for outsiders. That's my first message. That priority should be given. And second, at various levels, so be it Sunday schools, uh, summer camps, or full schools, uh, day schools, residences, whatever uh, the different levels. So I think at every level we should expand the activities of Iskon. Uh, so every every type of preaching has its own pros and cons. So uh, every temple I think should uh, promote. Uh, all of these, or either some of these uh, avenues for children preaching, uh, and uh, the leaders should give priority to children preaching. That's my message. Now I agree with uh, Radha Kanth Prabhu because whatever the leaders do or they don't do becomes the culture of that community. If in a community the book distribution is very well appreciated by the leader, then the whole focus is on book distribution. some places maybe fund collection some places maybe temple construction so if all the leaders give importance to school preaching or uh, children preaching you know or teenage preaching then uh, that will become the um, culture of that community so something needs to be done because in the icc they have formed committees where uh, child protection committee or there is some you know every temple has to have a child protection coordinator so that's uh, that's good but um, the fact that we are not uh, making any proper system to um, engage children or educate children in krishna consciousness from young age means we are not doing the right child protection we protecting their bodies but what about their souls so every leader may be in their community should make it a point like they should have a sunday school they should come up with a school like radha kan prabhu was rightly saying that i mean like yeah we can actually have school it's high time every iskon temple can have a school connected to the uh, temple and uh, give that facility to the community children to study at the same time for the outsiders to get a, a teaser of iskon what it is when their children you know walk into world of iskon school and even if they are there for few hours they come back home and they'll share that with their uh, parents family and that's a, such an amazing preaching in fact um, our iskon center here in vishakhapatnam started with children preaching i mean we were in the us when we came here there was another group of uh, uh, devotees who were you know uh, defected from iskon and uh, they were preaching so we were supposed to you know start a center here and the and we were just me and my husband we didn't there was just nobody there only two of us and there were maybe like maybe 20 25 brahmacharis and all telugu speaking devotees and i didn't even i didn't even know how to speak telugu at that time i just learned it over a period of time the language so 
but the only thing that uh, because of which we could uh, survive was children preaching because i started children preaching and some competitions and some sunday school and that way uh, slowly slowly the community formed and then now uh, is gone by is like um, is yeah it comes into yeah big temple category so yeah it happened so it all happened with children preaching as as we were in the course of discussion we were saying that uh, children are themselves become preachers you know they can bring their parents into krishna consciousness when they say yes on a sunday i want to go to temple in fact uh, yeah many of our um, summer camp children are in few, they have become big donors also because at points they have told their parents i will get first rank in this and only gift i want is that you become a member of iskon or you get me the whole set of prabhupad books so i mean they've gone to that level also that so much they are uh, you know enthusiastic about uh, iskon and their parents have no clue what is so interesting about you know my 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 child didn't ask for a cycle didn't ask for a cell phone i want the whole set of prabhupad books so i mean if myself i am a product of um, iskon summer camp i i attended a summer camp i stood first in a summer camp and my gift was a free trip to mayapur with my family and a biography of shri uh, prabhupad and that, that i was in class 7 and i read the biography of shri prabhupad with a torch light under a blanket for a few nights together you know because i was afraid of my mother she will say you have to go to school you can't stay up to you know late nights and that's how i read prabhupad's biography and i was so inspired and uh, at the end of it when i i was all tears seeing i mean reading prabhupad's life and i remember i was very young just class 7 june or june or july month when i was in class 7 and at the end of the biography i had tears and i said i want to become a soldier in this old man's uh, organization i want to do something for this old man oh he's so great he's so amazing i want to be i want to do something for him and that's when my whole life changed into a different uh, direction so what helped was the summer camp and if <laughs> that fateful day my father didn't get that uh, pamphlet of iskon summer camp i would have been in a some some other way some other family gujarati family probably doing some business somewhere so yeah Uh, as far as a final concluding message kind of thing is concerned i would say today's children are tomorrow's future for the spiritual movement they need to be nourished encouraged in their spiritual life and not only the spiritual side of it but also we need to take care of their overall well being all the five koshas <laughs> uh, both self realization and self preservation they need to be uh, equipped enough and empowered enough to pursue both these purposes of life parallelly uh, and whatever is required whether it is uh, organizing uh, summer camps or sunday schools or constructing uh, and coordinating schools for every community of iskon is concerned whatever it may, whatever it works we need to do the needful Uh, to nourish the children encourage the children in spiritual life and it's very painful for the parents and the leaders and many other devotees to see someone who is born and brought up in krishna consciousness deviates from the path once they enter teens or like uh, youth so that's more painful so if we don't uh, catch them in childhood to train them in the smartphone age in teens or in youth becomes little difficult so Uh, as prahlad says kaumaram acharyat pragno dharman bhagavata niha prahlad started his krishna consciousness right from within the mother's womb <laughs> and dhruva started at the age of 5 uddhava is a 5 year old child he is worshiping krishna dolls and uh, naradamuni in his past life as the son of maid servant he got the opportunity to associate with bhakti vedanta sages at the age of 5 and he came to bhava stage and prabhupada at the age of 5 he was doing some ratha yatra <laughs> his father gaur mohan de was encouraging him to become a great devotee of shrimati radharani and he was worshiping radha govind the deities so we have several examples within shrimad bhagavatam in our spiritual history in, in our acharya parampara we have so many examples of uh, devotees who started the path of bhakti right from their childhood so when that seed is planted in the childhood then even if they get distracted in youth they'll come back uh, but if the seed is not planted only uh, to plant that seed at a later age becomes little difficult once they enter teens it becomes more difficult once they are in youth and then they have so many responsibilities of family and profession it becomes even more difficult yes there were there have been successful examples of corporate preaching 
college preaching, congregation preaching. Yet, if there is an opportunity to make someone devotee right from childhood, that's wonderful, right? <laughs> so, as much as possible, we need to prioritize this. That's all I can say. And I'm very grateful to be amongst all of you for the last one hour and hear so many wonderful perspectives from many senior devotees like Nitya Sivani Mataji, Radha Khan, and all of you. Thank you so much. So, Hare Krishna Prabhu, uh, I take pleasure so, to thank all of, all the senior devotees. So, they are doing uh, wonderful contributions, not only to us, to the entire uh, devotee community. So, there are many topics to discuss. So, let us all plan on the, on the upcoming uh, sessions. So, I especially thank Swarup Krishna Prabhu to arrange this wonderful thing. So, as a neophyte devotees, we are also very uh, uh, excited so to receive many feedbacks from great devotees like yours. Three great devotees. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Panchakal Padru Pucha. Kripa Sindhu Deva. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, dear devotees. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.